Hello watch fam, I'm the Chirpy Panda and welcome to my affordable wristwatch channel where we unbox, give first impressions, do reviews and find out how to get those watches onto your wrist. Today I'm looking at the Timex Marlin, the classic edition, the one that has been pushing Timex all the way up. I mean they've been doing a lot of great stuff, everybody knows that. They've been doing um, the Timex Q, they've been doing releases of the Timex Marlin and they're doing different versions of both the Q and the Marlin that really brings all of those Tarmix elements and all those classic vintage designs into play and kind of really making me itchy to buy more of their damn watches. I've recently reviewed the Timex Marlin California dial, a California watch I should say, and it was an absolute cracker of a watch. Um, yes, the movement is noisy, it is a kind of cheap motor movement. Having said that, the watch was well done, it was well designed, the case was nicely finished. The dial itself is superb to look at, it's just a pristine looking dial. I have a lot of hopes for the Timex Marlin. Uh, I guess this classic mechanical watch. So the previous one was automatic. This is a mechanical hand wound um, vintage recreation or reissue of the original classic Marlin. So without further ado, let's flip the camera around and uh, check out and unbox this watch. Okay guys, before we jump into the unboxing, I realized after re-watching myself that I have incorrectly called this the Marlin Classic. It's actually Gentleman, or is it the Gentleman Standard? So I misnamed, I guess, this piece. I also made a mistake in, and I called uh, each one of these uh, Roman numerals, which obviously it is Arabic my bad <laughs> so i had to clarify that before the unboxing starts so uh let's move on to the unboxing without further ado welcome back guys in front of me is the tomex marlin classic i believe they call it classic which is a 34 millimeter automatic uh, and hand windable uh, tomex watch so i got this from the timex.com website i actually had to jump through so many hoops and bounds just to get this um, because in, in australia you can't buy anything for retail in the american website i paid 199 dollars for um, free shipping however on a, in the australian website it costs almost 500 dollars. i don't really understand why the discrepancy in price even with the exchange rate difference but here we are i really hate this box i, I actually un, un, uh, unboxed a previous marlin um, not previous one, but like a different one, which is a California dial. And uh, the box is also nice and long. Why do I have it long? I don't know. Now let's, without further ado, let's have a look. Ah, this is way better sized. So on here is a little bit of information. The gentleman standard then and now, the reissue of this 1960s timepiece pairs the purity, precision, and pleasure of a hand wound mechanical movement with the timeless sophistication of a slick design. Um, actually, I don't know if this is actually automatic. It, it doesn't say. So it might just be a mechanical watch where it's hand wound only. Because the other Malin I tried was an automatic, I made an assumption. Wow, this is very, very vintage looking. And I, this size is perfect, 34. For me, sorry, if you got bigger wrist, um, Maybe it'll be too small, maybe, I don't know. But for me, I have six and quarter inch wrist. It is actually perfect. Let's unwrap this like a mummy. They wrapped it like a mummy. A mummy. And we're done. And I think there's a little bit of a plastic on top here too. Okay, the, the case is identical to the uh, California Marlin that I reviewed previously. Uh, albeit that it's just smaller. So before I jump into all the first impressions and whatnot, let's look at the sizing of my trusty digital caliper. Let's check this. Now did this say 34? And no, there you go, 34.1. So I'll just say 34. Thickness is 10.2. Very, very thin. Now, I think 50% of that um, thickness is actually from the crystal itself. Lug to lug. And get that right 41.3 very nice and 18 mil lug width now if i was to look at this the case itself it does remind me of the previous marlin maybe all the marlin have exactly the same case it's basically the whole thing is high polish um the lugs 
are very very sharp and uh, protrudes a lot once again reminds me of kind of like the pocket watch in the day right so the watch is back in you know when they first were created i should say uh, they were basically pocket watches with these little lugs soldered on directly and it just protrudes like this with two little kind of hooks where you can put the band over um maybe they put a nato or, or some other strap oh the drilled lugs what this is 199 us dollars and that's without discount by the way with drilled lugs what are those like bloody luxury brands doing with their life mate i love it drilled lugs the side is completely polished as i mentioned before crown very small has kind of like indented in to the case is that what it is kind of like almost like a crown guard um but it is not signed but it is polished though the teeth is easy to grip um whoop, okay the the movement winds very well it feels very nice to wind um, on this side just polish there's no detailing no nothing I appreciate, I do appreciate the drilled lugs. The strap itself feels okay, I guess. It says Timex on the back. Um, embossed genuine leather. What does embossed genuine? Oh, do you mean this kind of like a faux snake skin embossing is what it is. Very nice to touch. Not very stiff. I feel like I can break this in quite easily uh, without too much trouble. Now moving to the hero or the star of this watch, the dial. Wow, wow, we are. The champagne sunburst dial is probably a bit too bright, the light on the camera, so you might not see it as well as I can. But in person, the champagne color really comes through. It's kind of like a, it's not yellow per se. It's like a very light yellow. The best way to put it is champagne. I think that's the nice word. I mean, you can use any other yellow color, but champagne is the best way to say it. The hands, uh, both our second minute hands are all painted glossy black, uh, same as the indices, which are, I believe, applied. It looks applied to me at least. And there's a very like a light chapter ring on the outside. You can barely see it, to be honest. Um, but you kind of have to pay attention because the indices, you know, they grab your attention. The Romans, the Roman numerals just grab your attention. It's, it does, it did opt to do something different. Normally people, I'd say manufacturers will go 12, 3, 6, and 9 for the Roman numerals. Um, however, Timex decides to go 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 and left 9 and 3, funny enough. Uh, having said that, because of this unique decision, um, it has created a very unique design. My camera is having trouble focusing on the watch. I apologize um, if you're kind of saying, why is it so blurry? It's because the, the, the reflection of the sunburst is confusing it, I, I think. Um, or at least that's the only way I can say it. So let me just quickly test out the movement. So there's only one click, that's, that's good. I was gonna go counterclockwise to 10 past 10. And the hand winding is absolutely amazing. Great. It sounds like a toy, like a toy hand winding. When you wind it, it sounds like a toy. Like you, you know those old school tin toys? It feel, it, it sounds like that. Moving on to the crystal itself. Um, now this, to my understanding, is acrylic. It is very, very proud. It's like a box cut and flat on top, so it kind of curves inwards and it actually slopes into the bezel. Like it was a, a part of the actual bezel, like the bezel becomes crystal on top. So that's a very, very nice touch. There is no, there's no like noticeable seams. It's slight edgy, but otherwise it's almost seamless. Moving to the back, um, it's just a, what is this? So it's not a screw down back, it's a push down back. Is that what it's called? Um, and there are like this, Kind of stickers movement made in china once again living residues strap made from china um why do they even need to do this i don't understand look you see that residue it's disgusting oh my god you see this timex stop it whoever is from a watch manufacturer please stop putting those darn stickers on there if you're gonna do it put it on top of one of these like circly things you know and then i can just whip the whole thing off now I'm gonna have trouble trying to figure out how to, do I put peanut butter on it? What, I don't want to do that. Can I not? If you know how to do it, leave a comment below and tell me how I can remove it without like completely ruining the watch. Anyways, moving on to the case back, it has a embossed Timex logo on it with some information. The information says, uh, reads, uh, water resistance 30 meters, um, it's hand winding movement circa 2017. I think this watch was made in 2017. I believe stainless steel case. That's all they say. That's there's not much else that that is said. 
Um, once again, the leather strap. Ooh, very nice. Very nice from the back. And yeah, that's that. That is my uh, kind of like a first impression of the watch. All these detailing what I can see. As a quick size comparison, I'm wearing a Seiko Saab 033, which is a 30 millimeter uh, Swatch watch. Uh, obviously with a steel band, a Jubilee band. Um, and this is a 34, much, much smaller, much more dainty, much more dressy. This is always obviously a daily kind of casual-ish watch. Um, the leather is really nice too, the leather strap, the black leather strap. I don't mind that. So I'm going to take this off and then have this on my wrist. Here you have it. Now people always ask, why do I compare it? Oh, actually, why do I put it on my wrist um, with another watch like the Saab? Oh God, I'm always so tight. Peter's so tight. Um, but it's for size comparison, you know, because a lot of times when you look online, you see someone wear it and it's like, oh, that looks amazing. And um, there's no comparison of a watch that's like kind of popular. So Saab 033, a lot of people have that. So you can at least see, um, oh, this is how it looks next to a watch that I might have or comparable to. So you'll know whether this watch can look on on your wrist. And especially for someone with a very thin slender wrist like mine, so like a six and quarter inch wrist, um, you can then think, uh, would this watch look good on my wrist? Because if it's too big, then it's gonna look stupid. Now, I probably need to loosen this strap, but I don't think I need to. I feel like it's just, I need to break it in. You see how much space there is? I just need to break it in. It's a little bit stiff, this leather. So I might have to just break it in and it'll look nice. Oh, look at that, it's, it already feels a lot better. So this is how it looks on resting. You're very dressy, I have to say. It's a very, very dressy watch. It's a bit thick because of the crystal, but I'm sure it'll slide under under the cuff. Like it should slide under a nice shirt because it's white. It's quite thin either way. Um, it's thick in terms of a dress watch, but it's thin in terms of a swatch or dive watch. I'm trying to extend the wrist roll just so you guys know <laughs> what I'm trying to do. Because <laughs> a lot of people want to see it in multiple angles. Um, in, in like from afar like this, if it's like like at this angle, I don't know why, but you know, that's a really awkward angle to have your hand. But at least you can see how it looks if you were to like look down on your hand. Um, if it's at resting, you know, you're just sitting on a table. If you're looking at the watch at this angle, at this angle, at the back, here. <laughs> Anyways, let's flip the camera around and have my final thoughts. So that was my unboxing and first impressions of the Timex Marlin Classic, a mechanical hand-wound watch that does so much more than what it says. It is a really good, very faithful uh, reissue, including the size, 34mm. They don't really make that watches that small anymore, but I'm very appreciative of it, especially because I have tiny little baby wrists, <laughs> six and a quarter inch wrists, which is tiny, let's let's be honest. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what type of, like, exercise, is there an exercise I can just do like this and I get like really beefy wrist that I can I can wear bigger watches something that <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to wear bigger watches I want to wear a wider range of watches however this little beauty here 34 millimeter is absolutely perfect for my tiny little baby wrists also I forgot to mention I was saying Arabics I mean I was saying Roman numerals for the for that for the uh, indices, but I meant Arabics, okay. But uh, let's just say for the record, I I knew I stuffed up after <laughs> rethinking about it. But yeah, the, the the design of this is very unique. Normally, as I mentioned, twelve, three, six, and nine are the Arabics people use. However, they decide to say twelve, two, four, six, eight, ten, uh, which puts this on just a different a different um, spectrum to other similar watches. For example, the Rolex Explorer, which would be three, six, and nine. So they didn't want to be a same same Z, I guess. Um, maybe back then, and this they've done well to do that. Um, look, I haven't got the original original Marlin, so I can't say. I can't compare it side to side, but from what I can see, this does look like a very, the, at least the images online, very, very faithful reissue. It's a very light watch. It's a very simple watch. Um, however, I feel like it's quite robust. So I've purchased the King Seiko Vintage before. Um, oh, I still have it, I should say. And I always feel like if I drop that watch, it's kaput, it's game over. If I wound, like if I hand wound it too hard or too quickly, it's kaput. I don't have the same feeling with this one. Um, so I felt like, not specifically that the quality is higher, but I feel like because it's a reissue that is still faithful, um, 
like it's it hasn't gone through the years of deterioration where the King Seiko did, where if I was to drop it on the table, <laughs> I feel like it'll break. It could just be my own feeling. The little the drill lugs is a very nice touch. I keep telling, I keep saying, I should say, why don't more ma watch manufacturers or watch makers do drill lugs? Is it really hard to do? These tiny little lugs got drills on them, and this watch is like 199. I got it for less than that. I got a discount, but let's say 199 from the Timex website. It's it's cheap as chips, and it's still be able to do it. So. You guys need to, you know, pull up your socks or something. You gotta put some drill lugs so that I don't have to scratch the lugs every time I change my strap. Now, moving on to the actual strap itself, it's completely usable. It's genuine leather, according to them. It feels like it is. Um, it, it has a really nice kind of snakeskin um, design. If you're into that, if you're not, you can definitely change it. Um, I reckon if I put some uh, a tan or brown leather might look better than the black the black seems a bit jarring on this watch but yeah i don't know my first impression is very positive i know if you guys watch enough of my video it, it seems like i'm always positive but it's not always the case it's just somehow i do a lot of research before i buy a watch and the by the time i spend the money i'm quite confident it's going to be good other than some spur of the moment purchases so the hmt for example I st I'm still on the fence whether that was a good purchase, even though it was $18. And the Polio is another one that I'm kind of half a mind about. This is for, actually, I have the Polio here. So compare these two watches. They're very similar in the sense that, I mean, they got both have oh, very retro looking. Um, so this one is the, this one is the Polio, the USSR Russian brand. And this is the T Timex, obviously a very, very American history steeped in american history founded in 1854 and uh, as a waterbury clock company in waterbury connecticut so which one do i like more i mean the timex is more sturdy i feel like the polio could break at any time especially the movement issue if you've watched my previous review i might leave it down in the comments below um i don't know they they, they have a very similar vibe but one of them is 199 this one is like 80 or 90 dollars so whatever take what information you will from that <laughs> um, my recommendation will probably be go for the timex it's a bigger brand it's more reputable to my understanding at least polio is also big in russia but this one you know global reach easier to service um that's that's my review that's my quick look unboxing and first impression of the timex marlin classic mechanical if you like the watch i always say if you like the watch not the video <laughs> if you like the watch leave a like if you hate the video, leave a dislike. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, uh, I, I post weekly uh, different watch reviews, first impressions, unboxings, similar to this. If you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button so that you get notified when I release a new video. Otherwise, you guys have been amazing. I'm the Chirpy Panda, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace!